Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, world class actor and musician, True Sealy. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, rock and rollers? Rich Redman here. Yep, it's another edition of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City. My co-host, Jim, is out in the woods somewhere camping with his family. These are the things we do in COVID, man. We're smelling the roses. And today's guest, he's a new fast friend, but man, he is super, super accomplished. Coming to you from Los Angeles, my pal Drew Seeley, six-time platinum singer, songwriter, actor, dancer, producer. What's happening, Drew? Well, it's going uh, on, man. Chilling, man. <laughs> same, same as you. Just uh, hunker down and trying to, uh, well, trying to get some out, outdoor time. But these fires have been kind of nuts, and uh, it's hard. It's, it's hard to breathe out here right now. So. I yeah, I, I got out just. I got out just in time. I've been in Nashville for three weeks. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> is it just You're raining out your soot? Window. What's that? You're looking out your window like it's right outside your window. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it. The sun is like blotted out. It's better today than it's been, but um, you know. I, does it at I, least smell I, like campfire? It does. It does. does it? it smells like campfire. You're, <laughs> there's there's a, a a thin layer of ash all over everything too, like our car, oh. our, our porch. So yeah, ho hopefully this will be over soon. 2020 has so many fun surprises for us. Oh my God, what a year! Anyways, and what happens next? <laughs> Yeah, you and your beautiful bride also, who's going to be a guest on our show, which we're so excited yeah. about, and actress, host, and your beautiful daughter, you're like one of two couples that my girlfriend, Kara, and I have seen in the last six months. So, yeah, and our circle very small, but uh, yeah. Very small circle. And Jim and his bride are the only people we have really seen in Nashville. I got to see my bass player a little bit the other night. Uh, Jim, I don't know if I told you, but I went over to Tully's house and we were talking about slapping the bass and playing the drums and missing did that you, time in the you, trenches. Did you tell him I said hello? Tully? Totally. Did you? Yeah. Drew, he has a thing with uh, Tully. I don't know. He has a I, weird... I, I'm gathering that, yeah. Weird relationship. Something. So, you know what? You have been at this a long time. You're originally from Toronto, right? Yeah, I'm a Canadian. Okay. And uh, what the, your first job was, you were so young. You were like nine years old, were you not? Yeah, well, when I was nine, I guess I was, you know, doing dance recitals and uh, modeling for Sears catalogs and that kind of thing. My first real job was uh, when I was 11. Um, I was one of the children in the uh, pre-Broadway production of Showboat uh, in Toronto. So I did that for a year. You know, singing, dancing, and acting every night was my after-school activity, as opposed to playing hockey like all my friends. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just fell in love with acting, music, and since then, that's really all I've been, <laughs> all I've been doing. With my that's incredible. I mean, what, what, I mean, look at that Hollywood smile, Jim. Come on. It's undeniable. <laughs> did you not play hockey, or did you? I, I'm, I'm good with the hockey stick. I'm good on skates, but when you combine the two, I'm, I'm a hot mess, so yeah. <laughs> Does the, the dancing doesn't help the hockey at all? You think it would, but for some reason, no, no, you, you really would, yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> So I, you know, you do so many different things. You're a re you're a true Renaissance man. You're a true song and dance man. So when people, you know, when you meet somebody in the elevator and you have to kind of give them the elevator pitch, like, oh, what do you do? I'm an entertainer, and I hate to take people's, you know, grinding twenty years. You've been at this more. Um, is it safe to say that people are going to stop you in public because of your relationship to Disney and the high school musicals and another Cinderella story with Selena Gomez? Is that kind of, you feel like your calling card or what people remember you most for? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, those are, I guess, the most high profile jobs that I've done. Unless you're, you know, in the theater scene in New York, you know, I, I was in Little Mermaid and uh, um, Jersey Boys on Broadway. And, you know, that's a whole other aspect of my life and career that I love can't wait to get back to live theater. Yeah. Starts again. Um, but yeah, you know, Amy and I, my wife, I've been talking so much recently just about how in LA, especially like, you know, you fall into that pattern where your job and what you do and what you have done starts to define you and you start, yeah. you know, equating your, yourself with your, your self-worth with what you've done. Your and body of work. 
Yeah, I'm so over that, especially now being a new dad. Like, I'm just seeing how ultimately unimportant <laughs> a lot of things I used to think were so important were. Um, so, yeah, grateful for all the Disney stuff that I did. It was a fun period in my, in my life, but um, it's definitely not who I am. Um, well, who are you? What defines I, you now? I'm still figuring that out. I don't know. <laughs> I, I who are you? Who am I? I, um, <laughs> I am 24601. Oh, Jean Valjean. How about, nice. how about a little I, Broadway I, reference there, pal, huh? Dang, Jim. <laughs> Who am I? Well, Jim's kids are very much into the Broadway thing with uh, okay. Hamilton. And what was the uh, song that I listened to and charted and played, Jim? We did um, Waving Through a Window from... Um, All right. Oh, man. What's the musical? Cam. <laughs> she's, she's outside. My it's, daughter's... Uh, she, what's, the, what's the musical that she likes? Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen. Through a window Thank at her you. and ask. Yeah. Boom. There you go. Dear Evan that, Hansen. No, but that's Drew, that's very impressive. I mean, to to cover all those bases, to to have have sang and danced and performed on Broadway, sang and danced in your own music videos, Disney productions, writing theme songs for television shows, guest starring on tons of TV, and you know, that's that's incredible. Yeah, I guess some people are, uh, you know. Uh, specialists and fine tune on exactly you know their path and what they want to do i'm sort of the opposite i just like being a creative octopus you know just have arms all over the place because that it's fun it, you know it keeps me keeps me fresh and engaged and learning things that i don't know um and i've just been fortunate enough that i've been able to have a career in the arts whatever that is yeah um, and one thing slows down like right now for the last five years or so i've been primarily acting and productions have really, you know, there are some still going on, but because of COVID, um, that side of the business has been eviscerated. So, you know, you got to pivot. So lately I've been pitching a lot of like theme songs, like writing songs for shows and um, doing that more of that kind of stuff, which was something that I've wanted to do. So it's the perfect opportunity to do it. So, yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you doing anything with TikTok? <laughs> I finally signed up the other day. Uh, Did you? Follow Just me there, a, Jim. Um, <laughs> let me go find you. I haven't made a video yet, but I've, I've been watching and going down the rabbit hole kind of trying to see what it's all about. <laughs> it's nuts, man. There's a lot of yeah. creative people on that media. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. yeah, we just, we just had a gal on, uh, call me Chris call with a K Chris with a K and she has only had her page for like four and a half months and she's got like 4 million followers. It's crazy. Yeah. She's doing something right. Yeah, the, right. The, the potential is there. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I, I, I don't know if I've got a, my hands full. <laughs> It's it's, just, yeah. <laughs> it, it may it may not be a thing uh, come tomorrow. So well, that's you know, the thing. Never like, by the time I finally decide to jump in with two feet, it'll be the next thing. So <laughs> totally, totally. Well, you've written so many songs, Drew. Uh, you've perf uh, written and performed on ten plus Disney soundtracks. Is that even a higher number now? Uh, I'm getting this yeah, from the wiki. I don't want to say I, I've stopped. Yeah, uh, keeping count, but I I have. <laughs> uh, I've been Disney's been very good to me over the years, and um, you know I hope to work with them much more in the future. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've been I've been writing for my. I've re as you know, I've released a, an, al an album and a couple of um, a, a lot of singles and music videos myself as an artist. Um, yes, kind of my Disney stuff. So lately, I've been I guess more focused on that. But but yeah, from from High School Musical on. Um, yeah, Disney has been Disney's been fun. <laughs> Yeah, everybody can check out uh, DrewSealy.com or Drew Sealy on Spotify. And I was kind of like working out today. Kara was on her her, her uh, rollerblades, and I went on a, an extended walk. And I turned on your Spotify playlist, your channel. And, um, I mean, it's it's across the board. It's like interesting, cool singer-songwriter stuff, uh, pop rock. And then there's stuff that is is reminiscent of boy band like r&b stylings yeah, that's kind of where i come from i mean i was in a boy band when i was in high school that was that's also part of my history my story uh new ground new ground and you ground hey um yeah yeah you have done your homework <laughs> yeah when we when my family moved from uh or from uh, uh toronto to orlando florida it just happened to be the time that lou perlman was putting all those boy bands together so, of course, I auditioned for one, not one of his bands, but um, a band and, and joined it and did that for about three years. And it was a lot of fun. And uh, and I, I yeah, I still got still got the outfits under the house somewhere. <laughs> That's my, true. My, my pleather pants. Check them out. It's me, Drew Seeley on TikTok. 
Hey, I, love well, that. I, got, I got some followers already. I got it. No, I do have to follow. Now you're, I'm your 350 second follower. What is it? You can right. go ahead and follow well, me back. <laughs> you want to follow him? Sure. My son's going to follow you. It's All me, right. Drew Sealy. Go look him up. Yes. Love it. Look See, there's a, new, there's a new fan right it's there. Yeah, it's right. Right. It all Incredible. Like show. <laughs> and, uh, and Drew, I, I've seen your beat lab. You've got a beat lab in the backyard there where you can oh. be, cr be creative, man, and, and, and do your thing. And I know, um, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think you have like a, some new publishing venture. And so you're doing things there. Yeah. And what's, uh, and so are you, catch us up on that world. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, I just signed a, um, a pub deal with uh, a new company called Run and Gun. Um, and uh, I, a friend of mine, Alex Garingas, who I've been working with for years, and uh, his business partner, Johnny Gordon, and then I believe um, uh, Sam Hollander, who's a songwriter you might, may have heard of, is, uh, is sure. a partner in that. And uh, yeah, so far so good. It's a very new thing, but uh, pitching a lot of things for a lot of things and uh, get good vibes all across the board. So uh, it's, it's the, perfect, the perfect thing, and it came at the perfect time in quarantine to, you know, yeah. Get me off my butt and really start uh, honing my, you know, production, you know, skills and, and uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's that's what's up with that. So well, yeah, because I was going to ask you. I, I would I would, I would love to collab. It's been a while since yeah. I since I, I wrote, but I'm, I'm, you know, like many drummers, like you know Neil Peart and these guys, we're lyric guys, which is you wouldn't think, but. Um, but that's always really fun. And so are you writing with people in the beat lab? Or are you doing Skype sessions or? Uh, yeah, I mean, zoom sessions like this, I've, I have done them. I find them to be kind of, kind of difficult. And I'm more of a, I'm more of a either in person with the, with the other writers kind of guy or send me a track and I'll, I'll mess around on my own time and send you back some lyrics and some ideas and we'll go back and forth like that. That's nice. So, um, yeah, different people seem to work in different ways, but, uh, but I would try a Zoom session with you if that's if that's what you want to do. Could be, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just could could be very fun. I know it would be very fun. Um, well, man, that's that's really exciting. Who who produced? Did you self produce your the albums that you have on your on your Spotify channel? No, or um, a lot of the recent singles are, are with different producers and writers. But my my full album, um, the resolution that you can find on Spotify, uh, was entirely Hello? produced by Justin Gray. Who, I don't know if you know, he's an amazing producer, friend out here, and uh, a fellow Canadian, so, oh, Canada. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love working with lots of people, and, and including new faces and, and voices, and, you know, I don't really have my, my little solid team that I stick to. I like being an octopus, like I said. Spreading yeah, you got just, yeah, well, I mean, Jim is really big on that. Jim, Jim has a million revenue streams, and different creative yeah, outlets it. and I think it's a good thing and he's quieting his children right now he's like shh <laughs> you never know where inspiration is going to come from too I, I have a, um, a single that I co-wrote with um, a friend of mine uh, Stefan Litt and um, another friend of mine uh, Rafiki Koga is his name he, he's um, somebody that I met in Rwanda on a trip three years oh, wow. ago and spent a, spent a day with, uh, with my wife and I were out there on a, um, a charity trip and Really cool guy, a uh, huge artist in Rwanda, and I reached out to him and I said, let's do some sort of like long distance thing. And um, first pass on both sides like came together like one of the best songs I've written in a long time. And uh, really excited about it, and it's, uh, we're going to put it out as a single on Spotify. Next right, month. man. So, so, yeah, I love like, it. Yeah, you never know who you're, who you're going to collaborate with, and it's actually, yeah. Keep as going. the kids say, it's collab. Everyone's collabing, man. Yeah. Everyone is collabing. Man, I love that. I, I, rules I, I, don't apply anymore if there ever were rules. Totally, totally. Um, and and so, tell us a little bit about your your um, your uh, experience uh, in in the acting world. Jim was looking at your IMDb and he was like, "Wow, this guy's been at it, man, in the trenches." Um, I remember telling you just a couple months ago that I was I was excited to maybe yeah. play a drummer in a Miller Lite commercial, but I was very nervous about the social distancing and I didn't know what it was going to yeah. be like. You know, yeah. so wh what? How have you been handling this and approaching your since act COVID started? Or? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't been. I haven't acted in anything since this began. Uh, yeah, a lot of voiceover auditions. Jim, okay. you, do, you do some of that, right? Um, I do. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get into the you know animated character space so a lot of that 
auditions for that. But uh, yeah, it's just it's hard. It's a weird time. There's some stuff shooting in Canada. There's some stuff shooting in Mexico. So I made some audition tapes. And but then the flip side of that too is like I still have a very young daughter and uh, no family in town except for Brittany, who you've met, my wife's sister. How old's your daughter? She's 14 months. <laughs> oh, brand new. Yeah, but we're co-sleeping with her too, so it's not like a situation where we can just put her down and leave and like it's all good. Like, it's it, it's some nights for a struggle, and that's just is what it is. Um, you just got to crate train them. <laughs> that's I, what I, we I, did. Played for that, yeah. Um, yeah. No, nah, she's she is the absolute best. But uh, but yeah, I mean, leaving town for a month or two would be next to impossible. Where I could book something, so. <laughs> Uh, you know, when, when that stuff picks up, it might be the right time in my life for it anyway. So, yeah. um, not really stressing on it. Just, uh, focused on music. I love that. Right stay, staying positive. Well, you know what I saw last night? We cranked it up and I loved it okay. right before Christmas. Ah, okay. W-R-I-T-E. Yeah. Where you played essentially a pop star, which is kind of like a version of yourself. I feel like there's this commonality in your work where you're a musician actor dancer and they all kind of cross pollinate and they ask for content for like the the photos in the walls of my house uh in uh, the character's house in the movie and i i took real pictures from my real boy band days and like put them all over the set so like it, it is me it's a absolutely a, a version of me yeah well, now, what was, was it like being in a boy band back in the day it was fun i mean it, you know it, i was uh, Did you guys think you were going to be like the next in sync or? Oh, we all did. Of course. The, yeah. Of course. Oh, we were gonna we were gonna take over the world for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. it went well. I mean, we we played we played at the House of Blues like a ton of times, and we did uh, like a tour of the Southeast in my mom's minivan. That was our tour bus, so that was a little rough. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we had an independent label we were signed to, based out of Houston, um, and. Uh, it was a yeah. It was a great experience. I was I had blonde frosted tips. I was that oh, guy. Oh yeah. I was you know you gotta have one, every every band boy band has to have that guy. So that's that's who I was. <laughs> I did the uh, I had the uh, frosted tips at one point too. Believe it. Or yeah, not. you could do frosted beer tips. That that would be uh, maybe a, I should. <laughs> I have gray <laughs> frosted <laughs> tips. It now. already is. I, you do. It's cool. I, I, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. It really uh, does fit him, doesn't it? The whole the whole <laughs> salt and pepper <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in, Somebody, some weird, in some weird way, it makes you look younger than you are. I think, really. right? Like and it's, it's funny because backwards. it's like a Steve Martin situation, or like a, or a, you know, <laughs> I try to think of other people that are, I don't know. Give me the banjo. Give me the maybe banjo. If, maybe if they redo the jerk, you can be that guy. Yeah, I mean, you're a jerk. It's a, it's a perfect. Come character. on, easy. I can definitely be a jerk. Oh, I really have to watch that. <laughs> As a motivational speaker, I have to really watch that side of me. You you started, uh, were you self-taught? Did you l pick up the guitar yourself and just start showing yourself stuff? Did you take lessons? Yeah, I got a, I got a guitar for my 13th birthday, and it was the best, or maybe it was 13th Christmas. Well, best Christmas or birthday ever. 13? Um, <laughs> yeah, that 13th. Okay. I got a, a Fender. That kind of, that's kind of starting late. Yeah. I, I, I you mean, think? My dad uh, and my mom sing. Um, my dad... Both of my parents were singing in the, the Bach Festival uh, Choir in Orlando for years and years and years while I was in high school. And, you know, but, um, but neither of them play guitar or really played instruments. So that's not something that I saw them being young and picked up. You know, I, I just wanted a guitar and they finally got me one. So at 13, I started writing songs, uh, joined a, a, a very like emo-y, angsty, you know, grunge band in, in high school. With my buddy Brandon and wrote some, you know, dark bedrooms type songs and and then I and then I and then I realized life wasn't so bad and I and I started writing happier songs um and to this day I'm not the greatest guitar player but I can noodle around and I can you know find chords for to get the song out um but I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself a guitar player <laughs> you know you're a rhythm guy not a lead guy right? <laughs> yeah if that <laughs> right. but uh I'm a I'm a vocal yeah I'm a I'm a harmony guy that's that's I think that's where my main talents lie is in like vocal arranging and hearing harmonies and how to blend them together. Which what were some of the things that inspired that in you, that, that harmony? Probably, uh, probably the boy band days, like, like yeah. binging, binging boys to men records and like a lot of that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, Are you a big punk fan? Uh, 
big. Mm. Mm. I mean, it depends. What, like, who, what punk bands are you are you thinking of? <laughs> the funny thing is, is that when it, when I started getting really hooked on harmonies and hearing them mm. in different songs and everything, was oddly enough, Bad Religion. Okay. Oh my gosh! Amazing <laughs> harmonic band. I don't know enough about their music either, Jim. They're they're just a, you know just a California punk band came up in the eighties and. Um, you know, they're, they're still doing it into their fifties now touring and rocking out and they've got, you know, four and five part harmonies in a punk rock band. Nice. My, my awareness of music other than musical theater only really began in like 1993, 1994. <laughs> Makes uh, sense though. So I guess my version of punk might, would be like the offspring Green Day. and Green Day. Yeah. Like <laughs> those were, those are the first albums that like were kind of punk that I, that yeah. the offspring very much influenced by bad religion. Were they? Okay, I love uh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my first exposition or exposure to music was 1984 with Van Halen. All right. That's kind of how I got into music, too. My gateway drug was, uh, the, you know, the police came out with an album called Synchronicity, and then mm -hmm. a year later, Van Halen dropped 1984, and then Jim is even younger than I am, but I'm sure he remembers J.J. Jackson, Nina Blackwood, Martha Quinn, Alan Hunter, all these VJs, video disc jockeys, Alan yeah. Curry. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, J.J. Jackson passed. Um, but we were, they, these people were just hanging out 24 hours a day, spinning music videos. And we just sat there in our underwear and our cereal in front of the television, just waiting to see our favorite artists. Yeah. yeah. Cause I was, I was eight or nine years old. That would have, you had you about 13, 14 at that time. Yes. Point? I was like right in that prime spot of like, Hey, this is what I want to do with my life, man. Maybe I, I can. Any, I don't think any of your on demand viewers now understand what, what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to hear the song that you want to hear. Yeah, we were at the mercy of whatever MTV was playing, and but you could usually see your favorite video once an hour. Yep. Crazy. And you'd read, you'd, you'd buy the album and read the shut the uh, liner notes back then. Oh yeah. You know, it was so exciting. Yeah, session um, musicians have always been kind of like you know this secret of the music industry, this kind of nebulous secret society. And now, forget it, we are really in the dark because there's no liner notes. You know. <laughs> Well, yeah, you gotta get on TikTok. That's the line. Yep. There it is. <laughs> gotta get. But the reason I bring up you teaching yourself guitar is uh, the sponsor of our show is the School of Rock, man. And and hey, and okay. if you were ever involved with them, Drew, oh my God, they would love to have you to do something with the kids because here in Nashville, Angie and Kelly McCray, they're friends of Jim and I's. They've been around for over a decade they have two locations one in nashville one in franklin but there's 250 school of rocks around the world they put instruments in kids hands and they say hey you're going to learn this song and oh by the way you better do a good job because we're going to do a performance they're constantly doing these performances and so they're learning by doing it's almost like a musical trade school and, and that's it in, in la yeah i know what you mean yeah they're and they're everywhere they're you know, they'd love to have you. Oh my God. I should try to set something like that. Like, you know, who's coming today? Oh my God. And, and, and so it's just a great thing. And so Jim, if you're a parent out there, you want to get your kids involved with the school of rock. It's so easy. We got two email addresses. What are they? Franklin at school of rock.com and Nashville at school of rock. That's right. And tell them that Drew Seeley sent you. <laughs> right. We love the School of Rock, oh, man. I love the School of Rock. That's yeah, right. man. I mean, I just imagine if we had that back in the day, because I'm kind of a product of music education. I was just kind of like overeducated. I started getting lessons like when I was seven. Wow. And then, then the challenge is, is when, you, when you're too studied, you have to um, throw it all away and, yeah. and, and sound like you're self-taught. Yeah, like unlearning some sometimes is the hardest thing. <laughs> For sure. It is. Well, I'll ask this. Spencer, if you could give up school and just go to the School of Rock, would you? <laughs> he, said, he said, sure, there you go. There you go. Playing music all day, every Especially day. Especially with what we've been going through for the past <laughs> month. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, Drew, you also, you started as a young man. You get your first gig. What was it? You were nine or 11? I forget. Uh, like 11, yeah. Yeah. And so then... You're, you're touring the world in the production of Jersey Boys. Yeah, well, I mean, and, fast, fast forward 20 years, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you're getting to sing all those amazing songs. Oh, yeah. what a night. I mean, I love that stuff. And a, yeah. a buddy of mine who I went to college with, Don Mioli, we used to call him the Mighty Mioli, he did the Vegas run or okay. of, of uh, Jersey Boys for years. Nice. 
nice. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was a, it was going on Broadway for 13 years and there were yeah productions in Europe and Vegas. And, uh, and then I was part of the touring cast for two years. Uh, and then, uh, and then close out the Broadway run at the end of 2017. Um, but I played Bob Gaudio, which was a really cool thing because he lives in Nashville. And, uh, the last time I was actually in Nashville, um, uh, cause I'm friendly with his daughter, Danielle. She said, what are you doing? Bob would love to meet you. And, uh, and I got to go over to his house and have an hour long conversation with the guy that I'd like been playing every night, eight times a week for three years and pick his brain, and, and he's such a smart guy, and it's, it's been involved in so many major, incredible records. But that was a real, uh, you know, icing on top of the cake for me. Um, That's but, awesome. Uh, Bob, what's up? Yeah, I love that. I didn't know he was here. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, he, he lives. Listen. Small world. We had there's we had like a lot of interesting secrets here. I mean, little Richard lived in a hotel up the street from my place. Like he lived in a hotel. I think he may have passed in his hotel room right up the street. Recently, right? Yeah, very recently. Sorry to hear that. Too long ago. It was like March or April. I was reading about that. Yeah, I listened to I listened to his music like all day that day. I mean, man, if you a legend. Oh, wap bab a loo bop a wap. I don't even know what he's saying, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Had a nice rhythm to it. Sure did. I mean, he was. How did, a, you, how, how did you meet your lovely bride? We met. Uh, you know. Okay, being an actor, you have random side jobs here because you need to keep your days free for auditions. So uh, it was like a, um, a brand ambassador kind of job, uh, promo models for a, uh, a cell phone promotion. Right. So uh, Verizon Wire, oh, this is music related, so it's funny. Um, before Spotify, before streaming, um, only 16 years ago, the only thing you could do with your phone was literally download a song to then listen to it. So we had to show off this uh, brand new feature uh, called like VCast or something on Verizon, where watch, watch how cool it is that we can download a song for three minutes and, and, um, and you, then you can listen to it. But we were on the street, so we had to convince people to not leave. So we had to like talk to them for three minutes while their song was downloading so that we could put some headphones on them and show them. And it was the hardest part because people were like, we got places to be, we got things to do. Like, nah, it's not that cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a week long promotion and we were on the same team. Uh, so we'd see each other, you know, make eyes at each other. And, and at the end of the week, there was a, um, a concert at the House of Blues to sort of like cap it off with James Blunt performing when that, you're beautiful. Song oh my came. God, yeah. So uh, I didn't have a wristband, and she did, and she grabbed my hand and stuck me in, and, uh, and ever since then, we've been inseparable. <laughs> nice. How long ago was that? This was uh, 2004. Oh, my God. So a long time you guys have been yeah. together. We married seven years, and we were dating for seven years before that, so whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> you guys so, beat two seven-year itches. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I got a seven-year well, itch right <laughs> Do you recall some of the hardest customers that you had that would want to pull away and you had to really improvise and be creative? I was horrible. I don't know how I didn't get fired. I would give up and just like go to Starbucks. She was really out of the <laughs> doing it. She was really doing right. it. She was, she was uh, I admired her tenacity. <laughs> where, where was this? Was this in Hollywood? It was a different place every day. One day it was like uh, Abbott Kinney. The other day it was yeah, like Vine Street. We did Santa Monica Boulevard. We did you know, uh, Main Street in Santa Monica. Just kind of wherever they told us to go. Wow. Now, are you at are you at the point now where you don't have to have the day get day gigs anymore, or are you pretty much all good? Yeah, I mean, we yeah, Amy and I both support ourselves entirely through um, either acting or music. Or Amy does a lot of hosting stuff as well. She's uh, right. amazing. Cool, so entertainment journalism. By the way, she has an amazing show that I think all of your viewers, listeners would uh, love uh, on Spectrum News every week, uh, sharing the good news that's happening in L.A. and the world as opposed to everything else that we hear from traditional news. She does an amazing it's, job, and it's always so interesting. And I love that Spectrum station. I really do. I like all the anchors. I like all the human interest stories. Yeah. It's a, it's, is it, an, it seems like it's a new thing, uh, Spectrum. Good news. I don't know. Spectrum. I think Spectrum's been around for a while, but uh, yeah. you know, I've only been involved with them for the last couple of years. But um, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 uh, that's one of her main main focuses right now, and I love it because it's like always actively looking for good people doing good things. So it it, uh, it takes the monotony out of these these long days and like all the all the negative news that you hear. You know. 
Yeah. Has she ever collab with John Krasinski and his Some Good News? <laughs> I, I think it's amazing that he's he brought a bigger spotlight to that whole thing. But she literally had a show that she started five years ago called The Good News. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so she's been sort of on this train for a while, but uh, just didn't, didn't quite have that same reach. But, uh, but it's right. yeah, transitioned into the spectrum, so it's a great thing. Tell me about the moment that you were able to just rely on your acting and creative skills. When did that happen for you and just not have to do any of the big gigs? Well, I was still working at uh, P.F. Chang's as a hot rice scooper when High School Musical came out. Uh, yeah, no. Tell, I mean, tell me about the job where you were a hot, hot rice scooper. What's that that is incredible, I, Drew. I was bad at that job too. I would burn my hands. It was. It was. I really wanted to get promoted to server, and they just they weren't having it. Um, and then I got fired. Thanks, P.F. Chang's, because uh, I was going to go home for Christmas to see my family, and they're like, "You can have six days, but you can't have two weeks, even though you've been working all year." And I was like, "Well, Christmas." And seeing your family or scoop of the rice, huh? Yeah, scoop yeah, of the rice. <laughs> What's it going to be? <laughs> it's the Italian uh, uh, <laughs> lake of P.F. Changini. It's <laughs> Pia, Pia Changini's, huh? Yeah. Um, well, it was a fun job. I actually made a lot of good friends uh, that I'm still in touch with there uh, that were also rice scoopers or, or some of them were servers. Um, I didn't realize that was a yeah, I, was, I, was, I had just moved to L.A. and I was just trying to cover rent, right? So that was one of my like cover rent jobs. Uh, I remember one time I, one time I served uh, Jamie Foxx some hot rice, and I, I had some CDs of, like, demos, so I gave him some music. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's probably why I really got fired. Did he, but, did he uh, take it? <laughs> did he take it? He took it with kind of like a, mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. come uh, on, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you really doing this to me right uh, now? Um, like, can you just give me my rice, please? But, uh, but, oh, but I think the question was, like, when did I get to stop having yeah. a real job? So, I mean, this is still a real job. Like, it, of and course it is. It's not, it's not a free pass. You know, we're not all just millionaires. Like we're, we're living, you know, regularly and comfortably, but regularly. Um, right. But uh, after, after High School Musical, a, a few more opportunities came up. Another Cinderella story was a, a movie I was involved in. And then um, I guess like right around then, probably around 2010. So for about 10 years or so, um, we've, we've just been focused on entertainment type. Look at that. And you're not even 40 years old, man. This is like <laughs> 0. 0. 0. 0.00001% of the population. I mean, how many people do we run into in sunny Los Angeles that are, are Lyft drivers and are serving us our iced coffee that say they're actors? I mean. But you know what? There's no shame in that. It's, I don't no. know. You know, those people, uh, those people, everyone, everyone <laughs> makes the world go round. Seriously, it's, it's necessary and, and. And so much of it is not is not talent. So much of it is just luck and being in the right time at the right place and having the patience to not go home to the town that you came from. You know, like I, I've had friends that uh, you know came also from Florida or Canada and lived out here for five or six years and then just decided it wasn't for them. My sister, Katie, um, amazing actress, and uh, she just decided ultimately she'd be happier in Florida. And uh, she's living her life and got a real estate uh, license out there and. Uh, has a beautiful son and you know it's that was that was her path but um luckily i just i was strung along just enough with with jobs in la to uh to keep keep it going <laughs> are your so folks still in florida it's but it's still a hustle uh yeah they're 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 all in orlando yeah now how what's the process you have an agent that goes and seeks out jobs for you or you know runs uh, them across I, your desk and for the most part i i mean yeah. i I have my ear to the ground too, and I've you know made some relationships that sometimes jobs come in through um, through friends. Like um, Amy and I both are in a film called Disrupted that was about to be in some great film festivals right when COVID hit. Um, so I think I don't know what the plan is for release, but hopefully on VOD later this year. But it's a really great dark thriller slash like almost funny movie. It's got a lot of cool elements to it and. Um, uh, and the director, writer, producer uh, was a friend of ours. Uh, actually, shot my Battle Lines music video in the desert randomly too. Um, so sometimes jobs come in through that way, and then other times through my agent. And you know, I make audition tapes like anybody else. And you know, a lot of it is just throwing Play-Doh at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm reading that book, The Four Agreements, that everybody loves and rereads oh. and rereads and. Yep. One of the agreements with yourself is to not take things personally. And that is such, 
that's a big one for anyone in the arts because, you know, Jim and I talk about the music. We talk to so many musicians that are just like, well, you know, uh, most of these jobs I've gotten don't come from auditions. It comes from a personal relationship. It's an assumption that you could play your instrument. In acting, it's like, no, he's too thin. He's too heavy. He's too this. He's, it's not, it's just you can't take it personally because there's so many other factors. Yeah, it's not about you. It's about, and it's still hard for me to. You, you can tell yourselves these things, but to actually like live them and like internalize them is a whole different ball game. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 just it's not about you. If you can get to the place where your job is not getting the job, if your job is just auditioning and having fun, getting to play, getting to like, I get to act today, you know. And then like just leaving it, you know, and if you get it, great. If you don't get it, then on to the next thing. Yeah. And again, it's easy to say, but then when you do that so many times and you still don't get a job, you start questioning yourself and you're like, Ugh, you know, but it's, it's one uh, of those things when you want it so badly and you want, you know, how come it hasn't happened yet? You know, that, that's, that's when you really start getting tripped up mentally. And but have you ever heard, you guys ever hear Steven Sharippa? He played Bobby Bacala on The Sopranos, oh, wow. the Flintstone movies and everything. He, he was the entertainment director at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Vegas. And he would literally go on auditions just as a hobby. It was fun, like what you're talking about. And because he didn't really need it, it's like finding your girlfriend. Yeah. When you're not looking for her, she disappears. Um, so and he ended up landing, you know, a couple of big roles. And that parlayed into, I mean, he was on all, se all the seasons of The Sopranos. Wow. Which I big, big say I've still not seen. So that's on my binge list. Oh, wow. Episodes. I know that's, that's like a seminal, I got to see it. Um, yeah. That's like, that's up there with The Godfather. Wow. Yeah, cool. yeah it's a big PF, investment. PF there's, a, there's a, there's a, you know, and, uh, yeah, and that's why I haven't started just because I know how long it's going to be. <laughs> I saw Gandolfini one night. He was partying uh, outside of Tootsie's. He was on a, he had his flip phone. And if that tells you how long ago it was, it was, it was a while ago, but he gave me yeah, the old. I gave him the nod, like, "Hey, Rich, how you doing? Hey, <laughs> hey Rich, hey, calm. What are we doing over here, calm?" <laughs> it's my Gandolfini impression. Yeah, you're, you're, you're so you're so right, Jim. Um, like, I think people can smell desperation uh, in music, oh, man. In acting. It's just it's, and it's and you don't even know sometimes when you're being desperate. Like the other day, my wife called me a desperate actor and I got really offended. And she's like, Oh, cause it must be true. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy to slip into, but the people that really just do it for fun and leave it on, leave it on the table and don't, don't really care and aren't too invested are the people that have the most success, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's and, funny that, uh, they did a screen test for Robert Downey Jr. When, uh, they were making Iron Man back uh -huh. in the, I guess, 07 or 06. And um, to watch that screen test, I, I don't know if a screen test is the same thing as an audition, but I guess they wanted to see yeah. how he would do on screen. Yeah. And yeah, he was so nonchalant about it. Completely nonchalant. Yeah, it is what it is, you know. But he's, he's had tremendous success in Hollywood and of course the, uh, the dark side of it that he had gone through. But it right. ended up turning out to be one of the, you know, the biggest role of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Because no. he probably didn't think he was the front runner, and he probably wasn't trying that hard in a, in a sense, you know. Because you can't you can't see anybody else in that role, though. Yeah, yeah. Now, I yeah. Th I think they wanted Nicolas Cage. I was one of the options. A whole different. Uh, Would have you know, been weird. Yeah. Would have been weird. Yeah, yeah we. We watched, speaking of Nick Cage, we, we rewatched World Trade Center because we just had our 9-11 and it was just like, it, it, you know, these, these Apple products are so smart. It was like the first thing, it was like suggested for you, World Trade Center. So we rewatched it and we were like, Kara and I were crying and everything. What a horrible day in human history, yeah. well, you know, but yeah, yeah. there is something to that guys, that whole just going into the room and like going, here it is, F it, and then just releasing it to the acting gods and walking out and going on with your life. Um, and the worst thing about it is that it, it's still a sale, right? We talk about selling and sales technique and things of that nature on the, on the show. Wow. Without the, uh, you really have no ability to follow up, right? Can't oh, do you. In, in acting or, um, yeah. I mean, our, personally, we don't. You know, yeah. my, mm -hmm. my agent can email casting and say, are, were there any notes? Like, like any, any, 
and and most of the time there is no response, you know. But sometimes they'll uh, they'll get something, lean something helpful that c- can get back to me. But from from my perspective, no, there's no follow up. It's just yeah. do the work, you, hope for the best. You've been <laughs> a part of a lot of big projects. I mean, what was the first hey. project that you were like, yes, finally? <laughs> I mean, Showbo was, you know, my very first job. I don't think I realized how good I had it. I didn't. I was, I, you know, I get to work with Hal Prince, who's like a legendary Broadway director, and Susan Stroman, who was also a legendary choreographer, director. Um, but to me, it was just a fun whatever job. So I kind of lucked out and started, started really big there. Um, I guess my first, besides that, I mean, getting my SAG card was a big deal. Um, I live, when I lived in Orlando, there weren't, weren't a lot of uh, things going on in Orlando, despite all the sound stages. I guess there weren't tax breaks in Florida that made sense for studios. So everything was shooting in North Carolina. So my parents would drive my sister and I to Wilmington to audition for things. And uh, I got a small part on Dawson's Creek, if you remember that show. Yeah. And, uh, and then on One Tree Hill. And then between those jobs, I, find, I got my SAG card, and that really uh, opened up a new um, batch of um, op- uh, opportunities for me. And now, what tell like you know for the layman listener that's that's tuning in, getting your SAG card is that kind of like the Hollywood nod, like yeah, you're legit. Yeah, I mean it's, it's the union. You know, unions mm-hmm. are important and protect their workers, and uh, you know. But not everybody can get in. No, I mean you have to, it's it's a weird catch twenty two, like because you have to book a union job to then mm-hmm. get a credit towards being you know in the union. So there, I I know there's other ways in, like uh, some people do a certain amount of union extra jobs uh, mm. back to work. Oh, okay. Get it that way maybe. Um, but I joined like 20 years ago, so I don't really know what the current laws or rules are. But um, yeah, I mean, you just, you're just protected in ways that you aren't otherwise. Um, you know, you can only work a certain amount of hours a day. You have to have like a basic trailer. You have to have some food, you know. Otherwise, you know, otherwise needy actors are preyed upon and, and uh, you know, directors can can be like well you're lucky to get this job you're gonna work 60 17 hours and tough luck oh it's raining sorry you should have brought your own you know like yeah like it can be <laughs> unless you have you gotta have somebody watching your back or it's it's easy to get taken advantage of yes. and you don't want to be taken advantage of so that's what saying right. before is like you cannot be taken advantage of so uh-huh. yeah it's a great well, lifeline funny thing you bring that up i mean go ahead rich I was going to say, it's a wonderful lifeline to have someone, you know, have your back and chasing down your, your, your pennies for residuals and uh, just, just watching out for those basic things, especially young actors that are, that are schooled on set and they can only work so much. They're going to have to have to have some sort of a semblance of a normal childhood. I, I remember telling Jim when I did that little cop part on that show, Happy, that I had a, I had a cute little trailer, cop number one on yeah. the streets of Queens. And I opened up and my script was there and my paperwork was there and it was like a three foot trailer but it was mine it's always like that. You, know what, you know what to expect at least you know like it's, you're always going to have that familiar familiarity yeah oh, so are you telling me that my rv is bigger than the trailer that you had rich really yes oh yeah the nice. corner the little corner that i can see that you're sitting in is sometimes all you get but it's your corner that's right this is mine <laughs> no yes. you get away well, that, you know, a lot of the entertainment business is hurry up and wait. So you and Amy had a relationship and here you were touring, doing all of these, you know, Broadway shows and, you know, you know doing a big venues and you're doing eight shows a week. What was your day typically like for a Broadway touring show? Um, is there a sound check every day? Oh, yeah. Every day. Yep. Every day. Um, yep. Usually... I'm trying to remember how it worked. Usually the sound check was like um, in the afternoon, and then we then we have time to go and have uh, have dinner. You know, have a few hours to have personal time, and then show up half an hour before call time. Um, but yeah, it was it was eight shows a week, so most most shows were uh, one day a week, two days a week. We had two shows, which was difficult. You know, like a matinee and then an evening. Yeah. Off. But being a, a traveling show, Mondays were our travel days. So on our one day off a week, we'd be getting on a bus or a plane and driving or flying, you know, eight hours, crashing at the hotel, getting up and doing it all over again. So um, that being said, it was the most fulfilling job I've ever had. I loved every second of it. I loved the people I worked with. I loved getting paid to see the country and, you know, 
and Canada. We, we went to Tokyo one summer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, played in a theater on the 13th floor of a high rise for a couple of weeks, you know, so it, it, the community, you know, just the, just that whole experience was something that I don't think I'll ever get uh, to replicate. So, you know, you, you, you slog through it. Some days are rough. Some days yeah. you forget your lines in the middle of the show and the show must go on. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Live well, that, that, that's and fun because that's different from the type of touring that, you know, I've been doing where it's like a new city every single day. The fact that you would have a travel too. day. Yeah. Yeah. I, and then you, you could plant for six days and really get to know the city. Tour was every night, new city. Um, oh, nice. But it was only for three months. Right. So you've been doing that for much longer than that. Uh, but, uh, but that was way more exhausting than being able to plant in a city for a whole week and sometimes two or three weeks, which was really luxurious. Yeah. Um, you know, cause then Amy would fly out to like the cool, we'd, we'd find our cities at the beginning of the year and she would pick all the cool cities and then be like, ah, you're going to come see me this weekend and this weekend. Um, you know, it was, which one was your favorite? Uh, uh, Boise, Idaho was, was a randomly a standout. I love that city. Really? Really good times there. I can see that. Um, uh, oh man. <laughs> I'm blanking out. How about, do you, how about, did you, did you ever do Jersey Boys in like we New did, Jersey? We did Fort Lauderdale one time and the, the Airbnb we got included a boat. So every day, all day, we'd go out on a speedboat and, and just spend all day on the water drinking and then like, well, not all day drinking because we had to sing that night. <laughs> <laughs> Of the day drinking and then yeah so like a whole week of yeah it felt like being on vacation more than tour um but yeah every every city was so different yeah yeah, I could see say, uh, Amy being like, okay, look, I'm not coming to Sheboygan, okay? Mark me down for Austin, Toronto, and Miami. At Minneapolis, I thought. That was great. It was such a, like, uh, green town and, like, some bike trails everywhere. And it's really nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I felt- Minneapolis in the summer of yeah, go- spring. Sure, yeah. It depends on what time of year you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> This really is like that Geico commercial with Flo where everyone's talking on top of each other. It's like we still haven't quite got it down with this Zoom thing. I hope it improves. It's like real life. So much yeah, so much better in person. It is so much better in person. I was looking at the uh, wiki, the Wikinator, and I saw that there's this guy, Kenny Ortega, that – puts a lot of huge shows together. He did the Michael Jackson farewell tour. He works with Miley. He's just, uh, he puts these huge things together. What was that like working with somebody like that? How long does it take to put one of these productions together? Kenny's Kenny's a great dude. Um, I'm dying to work with him again on something. I know he's got a new show called Julian the Phantom. just about to start on Netflix. So any fans of Kenny's out there, check that out. Um, And also Newsies was like, when he was a younger guy, uh, directed that. And that was right in the time where I was dancing and singing and like wanting to do this. So like that was a huge inspiration on, for me. So when I finally got to work with him on high school musical, it was a real dream come true. Um, we, we put the, the tour together for a high school musical. Um, I can't remember how long it took, take, took to do, but, uh, probably about a month, I would say of rehearsals every day, uh, in Burbank. And, uh, and then we went, yeah, we went on a, a South American stadium tour and uh, North American like uh, arenas uh, kind of tour. But uh, Kenny was, uh, he's, he's a very, he, he leads, with, leads with love, you know, and, and he doesn't like it if, if, if <laughs> try to remember, cause it's been a while, but <laughs> he didn't have any patience for people not paying attention and talking when they should be paying attention. Like he was very committed to making something very special for the audience and getting it right. So if you weren't as in it as he was, he was going to let you know and maybe sometimes embarrass you in front of people. That being said, he was one of the most loving, like, like warm uh, people and directors that I've ever worked with. Uh, just such a, such an awesome dude. Um, I auditioned for him re- more recently for the Rocky Horror Picture Show remake that came wow. out. Uh, and got really close on that. And that was a really, that would have been a fun project. What but, role? but it was right in the middle of Jersey Boys, and I would have had to leave that show to do that. And so, you know, timing, everything worked out the way it was supposed to, but um, definitely looking for another project with Kenny at some point because he's, he's awesome. great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, what role was that? You have on and Michael Jackson, time? you were mentioning Michael Jackson. He showed up, Michael Jackson showed up uh, backstage at the High School Musical concert with his kids, uh, Blanket and uh, Paris, I guess. Um, and they came backstage and, and he met all of us and shook our hands and said, Oh, what, what a cool show. And, you know, 
uh, we were we were jumping around like crazy after the show because we were you know you know he was a huge inspiration on, for me as well. Obviously. Sure. <laughs> so. Sure. Wow. That's an interesting yeah. interesting interaction. Yeah, people always ask, you know, what's your what's your biggest uh, fan geek out moment? Now that, that's usually it. Yeah, having Michael Jackson literally shake my hand and say, "Oh, well, I really like the song that you wrote." Um, talk about get your head in the game because yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, did <laughs> so, he shake uh, you? Yeah. Was it with the glove hand or with the? No, it was with the regular ungloved hand. But the hands were giant hands, like basketball really? player hands. Which was he which, a tall guy? He was tall. Yes, he was. He was taller than me, um, and he had just like freakishly massive hands. That's what I remember about Michael Jackson. Wow. Hey, was it a firm handshake, or was it like shaking a dead fish? Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere yeah. in the middle. But that's sort of where mine lies too. I'm not like a right. crush your hand kind of guy. Either. Right. Yeah, we need <laughs> these things, night, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got you to go for PSI when you go for the handshake. It tells you. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm here to dominate you. Who's your yeah. friend on the couch in back here? What's that? Oh, oh hey, hey, join us. Hey, Astro. 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 <laughs> That's this a nice couch. Yeah. I've been looking for a couch like that for my office. It's a good studio couch, you know? Yeah. You Last time I saw them, they had the cone. The, 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 they hate those. Oh. oh, yeah, those are no fun. Yeah. Cone of shame? I don't the like cone her. of shame. Yeah. What, it, what, what, what kind of projects do you have on the tip of your tongue? What would you like to do? What Broadway projects, anything that stick out, a, a dream role that you would oh, like to do? I mean, I think the, you know, everybody just watched Hamilton, right? Uh, when yeah. it came out to Disney Plus, I think playing the king would be so much fun, uh, you know, because you have maybe 15 minutes of stage time the whole show. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> you know, have you seen that, that play? Role. What? You've seen Hamilton, Rich? Oh, uh, my, my, my student, Sarah Cardiel, the real deal, Sarah Cardiel, she gave me her password for Disney Plus. And so she's like, you really got to watch Hamilton. I really got to okay. get to it. I'm behind. I haven't even seen The Mandalorian yet. Yeah. I've got to see uh, what. Watch the Marvel Universe first. It's much. Yeah, better. Jim is a massive Marvel fan. Does that interest you? Okay. Would you like to play a superhero or somebody that kills a superhero? I need to work out a little bit before. Like <laughs> Dad bod, Ezo, Magneto. Um, I could see him doing like you could probably do a uh, an X Men type of character, or maybe even oh. another iteration of Spider Man. Huh? I oh my god, all day that would be great. Um, <laughs> Tom Holland. Tom Holland yeah, kind of I mean, came out of nowhere. I mean, I, there are very few actors in LA that wouldn't be like, "Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a Marvel superhero movie." You know, like, you know, I guess. Let's try to be like, you know, I'm all about the arts, you know. And, and there's some art to those movies. There is some art to those movies. Um, well, okay, that's another good question. Have you heard the whole thing with uh, Martin fun. Scorsese? Uh, Martin Scorsese basically saying that Marvel movies are not. Uh, real yeah, movies. I heard that. But you know, people say bitchy quips here and there about whatever, and like, you know, just like. Get over it. Like, you know, so, yeah. I mean, but people could also say Martin Scorsese movies. I've heard of people be like, well, they're all the same anyway. They're all just a bunch of gangsters, you know, shooting each other. You know? And there's an element of truth to that. Like, yeah, they're very similar. Um, yeah. They're, they're all they're great. good. Um, I don't, I, you know, everybody is so sensitive. Don't be so, don't be so oversensitive. We're living in the time of ultra sensitivity. I mean, really, I can really live this. And I get it to some extent, but, you know, I think there's room for Marvel movies and fun movies that don't have. You don't, don't have to like change your life every time you see them. Sometimes you want escapism. You want you want something fun, and they look yeah. like fun. So yes, sounds like it'd be with massively yeah, technical. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Are you listening, Marvel? Yeah. Uh, what's, yeah, your, what's, your, what's your favorite was there, Marvel movie? Was there a, was there ever a character named the Canadian Wonder in any of these? Uh... Well, I mean, write it up. Be like okay. Lin Manuel Miranda and write the part and create the whole part for yourself. <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Jim. What's what's your favorite Marvel movie, if any? Uh, mm, 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 mm. have you seen I them mean, all? I mean, Black Panther was great, obviously. Uh, the first Iron Man, I think, was was so yeah. Cool. First Stop. one was good. And Solid. I feel like there's been so many in between. I, I get them mashed up, mixed up. <laughs> there's so many of them. Twenty three of them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you could probably school me more on that. Um, At a, I, I saw are, we saw Infinity War. We saw Infinity War two years ago in the theater just because, hey, let's go see it. Okay. Yeah. And I came out of that movie going, oh, my gosh, that movie was just completely mind-blowing. It's this generation's um, return, not Return of the Jedi, but Empire Strikes Back. It ended on a down, down note. Yeah, like, yeah. That's awesome. I love that. 
Yeah, and not, yeah, not everything has to be hunky dory. Yeah. It forced you to go back and look at all the movies and fill in all the blanks. At least for me, it did. Cool. Who's got I mean, that kind of time, Jim? Jim shames me. He's she's like you. It's now is the time to do the Marvel deep dive. So we're looking at twenty three movies, averaging at least two hours of film. We're looking I'm at. I'm doing the diaper deep dive right now. <laughs> That's all I have time for. If I get a half an hour dumb sitcom, I'm happy. That's that's all the time I get. Well, you're a much more developed human being than I am because I have somehow escaped cleaning, changing a diaper. Never changed a diaper. Well, they, yeah. you, you have your chance right there. Next I, time I, I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and, that, <laughs> if he, and if he does come over to change a diaper, please, please video it. <laughs> that would be I will. awesome. I will. I have this idea for a series of videos of Rich doing things that are completely unnatural to him. <laughs> like changing a tire, changing oil, changing a diaper. Um, yes. Really changing anything. <laughs> any yes. kind of changing. Any kind of tool. Change your hairstyle. I'd like to see a comb over next time I next time oh. we talk. Oh, I've got I've got photos of me trying to oh. make this thing look more conservative and it's just so yeah. crazy. I haven't it's had a haircut since since this thing started, so I'm a <laughs> Nice. There's your emo oh, cut man. right there. A hat is the only thing that works these days. I love That's it. That's good on you though. I've had, I've I've had a haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have, Jim. Jim, do you have your random question of the day? I do. Should we, should we cue the, uh, the jingle? Yeah, we have our friend Jeremy Little, who's an amazing composer. He wrote a bunch of songs for Bad Robot, J.J. Uh, Abrams' company, and I asked him to write the theme and the jingle for the random question of the day. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. What bullet have you recently dodged? Ooh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Oh, right before we were, Amy and I were about to have Ember, um, I, had a, I had my dream car, my, my Audi A5 that I loved, my baby. And uh, I knew I had to get rid of it because it was a two-door two -door, two -door, two -door sports car and you can't get a, a you know, seat back in the back for the baby. So I was... Very upset, and I was like, hmm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't want to. I don't want to. What do I find something on Craigslist to buy my car, and I'm, I'm gonna get taken advantage of? And just right at that moment, somebody uh, took the whole side of our car out and uh, uh, hit us from the side and scraped all the way down to the back, and uh, it was totaled out. And the insurance gave us way more money than I ever would have gotten on Craigslist for this car. Uh, we went immediately to the dealership and got a perfect little family car, which uh, I'm very happy with. So yeah, saved me a lot of headache. Uh, nobody got hurt, and uh, yeah. I, the <laughs> never getting hurt in an accident, that's I great. I dodged a bullet of, yeah, nobody got hurt. I didn't have to deal with, I didn't have to think at all. I just had to get the check and go to the dealership, and it was done. So, What kind of car did you end up getting? We got a, uh, a, a pre-owned, used, but uh, only like one year old with hardly any miles on it, uh, Kia Nero. Um, it's like a little SUV, uh, support SUV. You didn't want to do the Audi SUVs? <laughs> no? uh, you got any Marvel movies for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, it's 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 nice. It's a classy car. It's got some upgrades. You know, the sound system is is, is really good in it, and uh, I'm happy. This is the phase of life I'm in. I'm gonna ride yeah. it out. You know, I'll get I'm, my. I'm not. Uh, I'm driving our 12 year old Honda Odyssey that my oh, yeah. wife we had we had to get for my wife when we had our second child. And um, you gotta do it at some point, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it is what it is. The and, RV um, is for us, so yeah, I have to pick your brain, sir. We pull it with the, um, but we pull it with her new Mercedes, so oh, that's well, that's the other thing. That's so the, she uh, drives a nice car. <laughs> As a Rich good husband a should do. Yeah. No, uh, Jim, Jim is very knowledgeable about the uh, car business and he knows all the ways that the dealers will get you with all those hidden fees and stuff. So he'll usually come with me and protect me from that rat race. And uh, I just, man, I went practical again myself, brother. I got a Honda CRV and I could load drums and people and luggage and it's. That's the trick. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a car guy? Uh. I'm not. My dad is. He used to collect and still kind of does now and then uh, random like uh, classic cars, old cars. So we'd go to these, you know, old, old car shows in Orlando and, you know, where you sit on, sit on the hood and wave at everybody going by. You know, it's, it's fun, but 
I don't, I don't think I would like the cleaning regiment those would uh, entail. <laughs> yeah. I like that are very low maintenance, hands off. I don't have to think about them too much. And, you know, so nice, nice cars and nice things in general are not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, I love this conversation, man. I, we, Jim and I really appreciate you taking the time to do oh, this. Man. During fire season in Los Angeles and daddy duty, you're a busy guy. Um, it's worked out. She's, she's sleeping in the other room. so you know. Wonderful chat, man. Look forward to maybe seeing you in October. To all the listeners out there, DrewSeely.com, S-E-E-L-E-Y. You could check him out on the IMDB. Check out the body of work. New songs coming at you. Check out his Spotify page. Real song and dance, man. I'm just a man. Love it, buddy. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, nice guys. definitely. Jim, thank you for your time and talent as always, man. And oh, of, course. Uh, of course, to all our listeners, we appreciate the School of Rock being our title sponsor. Be sure to rate, review, share, and subscribe, and keep coming back for the good stuff. And we'll see you next time. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com.